Hello everyone, this is Will. And this is Alex. And welcome back to another episode of They Mostly Come Out at Night. Mostly. It it happened again, man. It's been happening. It happened again. It's It's been happening. A little on and off. Yeah. <sighs> but. Like, I can't believe it. Like, I didn't we, know. We found another movie that's really good. 100%. Like, 100% good. Like, it's a horror movie tailor-made for us. It's, yeah. Like, obviously, we, we both do the podcast, so we have pretty similar tastes. But this is some... This was made <laughs> with us in mind. It really was, and I don't even think it knew it. Like, you kept saying, and I agree with you, you kept saying this is a movie that you'd be proud if you if made I this, this the thing, only movie you made. If I made this thing, I could retire happy, knowing that, like... I made something amazing, and I'm never going to top it. That's how I feel. Yeah. And I, like, I agree. Like, it's really good. Like, really effective. Uh, it, like, it just, I think it understands atmospheric horror, because mm -hmm. there's not a ton of jump scares or anything like that. It's just really creepy. Yeah. There's only one. There's only, like, one big, really think about big it. jump scare. There's only really one jump scare, but... It just gets me. <laughs> Dude, it, I don't know, like, it's weird. Cause it it's understands like, what's really scary. It understands, like, the unknown. Exactly. It doesn't explain everything in, like, excruciating detail, but it explains it enough to where it makes sense, and you can kind of put it together in your head. I think it also, like, kind of gets how people would react to this situation. Oh, yeah. Like, and it's it makes you kind of kind of work for it. Yeah. Well, because, like, it's a slow burn, I'm not going to lie, but it's effective, and it was, uh, even if it's a slow burn, it was, like, really, like, interesting getting to the final point. Oh, yeah. You know, and like, as far as I'm concerned, um, the slow burn was worth it. At no point was I, like, bored with it. No. All. It just kept getting more fascinating, and, like... If, if I could argue that it's intriguing the entire time, because you want to oh, know yeah. what happens, it keeps you on edge that entire time. Where it's just, like, it's slowly building up to something, but you're, like, curious about... Because they keep revealing little by little, and then yeah. finally at the end, they just, like, that big punch. And you're finally like, oh, shit. And then... Ah, uh, I love this movie. We should probably mention the name of it, though. Uh, the Premonition. Yep. For 1976. Movie, for a movie that's so good, it has, oddly, a, a very cliché title. It makes sense though. I mean, it, uh, I mean it it completely it completely describes the movie. Yeah. To be honest. I didn't know what to expect though. <laughs> I you know, I knew like the pretty much nothing about this movie. It's not very well known. I didn't really know anything before we watched. I just kinda saw it. I saw that it was on Amazon Prime and I'm like, okay, this is we're watching this. And it fell in within our guy sadly it's fell within our guidelines. Very but, much so. But I mean, more to the benefit of us. Because well, here I, I was thinking we were going to go into another, you know, decent shit movie that we could enjoy. It, you know, <laughs> I didn't expect to like it this much. I flat out love this movie. I do too. Like, it's it's really good. I wouldn't say it's my favorite horror movie, but it's really good. Like, if you like atmospheric horror, holy shit. This is your jam. It's not just that. It's I, I. This is better than ninety percent of horror movies I've seen lately. Yeah, I can say that without a doubt in my mind. This is oh for sure, man. Like a hundred percent better than those. Yeah, and not even it's not even close. It works in every level, and I, you feel so satisfied after you watch it. Yeah, because like even the ending was just like oh okay that's cool, and it's just like it's perfect. I don't know. I'm I'm excited. Let's just get into it. I, yeah, I think we you. should. Let's just like <laughs> let's just. Uh, build. I'm almost sad to reveal like the entire movie to people. I am too. Um, I'll just say this right now. You can listen to this review, but my recommendation for you is go on Amazon Prime and watch this thing. Watch the movie before you listen. I would argue that you watch the movie before you listen to this, please, because if you can. Please, in the name of all that is holy. Watch. Watch it. Because you've gotten this far in the podcast, like, so we're telling you in the first five minutes of this review... To watch this fucking To movie. go watch this movie. Like, usually we recommend it afterwards, but I say, go watch it now, 
and then come back and listen to us like just love this movie and it, and, yeah. and enjoy it with us. That's Please. what I ask. Um, so if you're a huge, it. if you're a huge fan, go watch it. Watch it. Um, watch it. Sorry, we're excited because we got new mics. Yeah, we're professionals now. Yeah, because we both have mics now. Hopefully, the <laughs> big budget shit. Big budget. I mean, we're still in a, a tiny room in the, a basement, but we're still, fucking. But we there. Hollywood quality now, exactly. baby. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. We might have to adjust some audio levels because this is our first like two mic setup. Probably. But it'll be fine. But it'll it's fine. We'll figure it out. It's fine. So we apologize that this one's a little loud, but I don't know if it will be. Probably not. Well, just just fucking chill. So go watch the movie. But here's our critique and our review. Yeah. It's not really a critique. It's, it's gonna, not a critique. It's more it, of a it's gush. Gonna, it's going to be an. <laughs> it's a gush. An admiration. Yeah. Um, of this movie. I can't critique this. Here we go. The premonition. Yep. So the movie starts uh, with like a bus getting into a small town in Mississippi. Mm. Um, and it pulls up and lets this woman out, um, you know, this brunette woman, and she's going to be sort of the main focus of the whole movie. Um, as, as we'll find out. As we'll find out. I mean, you don't know that at first, but she becomes a bigger role yeah. as the movie goes on. And she kind of, a camera pans over and there's a, a big, like, carnival. Right. With rides and all this stuff. And we get a guy coming out of his trailer, and he has, like, ballerina shoes on. And he's, like, first he starts stretching, and then he starts doing, like, like a weird interpretive dance. Yeah, he's, like, getting ready for something. And we, for his... we don't know who he is in the carnival yet. He's yeah. just doing this interpretive dance in the morning and doing some weird shit. So, um... She, so the girl, after he does his interpretive dance, the girl that we saw getting off the bus walks over to him. Yeah, and they, uh, oh, he, they go inside his trailer, and he shows her some pictures. It's, like, different pictures of, like, families in, like... There's a, outside of his trailer, there's, like, a, it's, like, those cardboard... It's like where you put your, out your face in the cutout, and, and then it's just like, your face. they take the picture of you, and then like it's you and your family, and it's all supposed to be kind of cute, like you become a monkey or like a, yeah. a the stork carrying yeah. the mom and daughter. It's just your face, yeah. nothing else. It, it, he has a bunch of these pictures, and he's showing this, and he's like, "I found her," and she's like, "Are you sure this is the one?" Like. Because we've messed, like, we've, I don't want it to be like before, yeah. where it's, in, where we go and it's not her. Yeah, and then he shows her the picture, and he's like, look, it's even got the name, Janie something. Yes. And she's like, oh my god. Like, it's it's her. Yes. That's, That's all that, that scene shows. And then we get a, like, a scene of a guy walking into, like, a research facility. Yep, and um, he's talking to this woman and she is talking about telepathy she's a parapsychologist yeah so she's talking about telepathy and esp and kind of how they're doing a study on like how people how to interpret dreams yeah it's about like how to interpret what people are dreaming and how to help them with like identifying what's going on in their dreams yeah and you know all sorts of things beyond kind of our like I guess the normal realm of physics. Yep. And then this doctor comes up, and he gets introduced to her, and we see that he has the same last name as the girl in the picture. The daughter. The, yeah. da the girl, the little girl in the picture from earlier, he has the same last name. Yeah. Then after this, we get a scene of the brunette woman who got off the bus earlier. She's outside of the school. Remember? Uh, so... We get a little scene, actually, before... She does go to the mm. school, but before that, she... Basically, we see the guy now in full clown makeup. Oh, yeah. And he's taking pictures of the families in the little cardboard Doing cutouts. their things. And then she comes behind one of them and, like, like taps on her watch like she's going to go... Um, like to try it, and it's time. She's trying yeah. to, to engage the daughter. Yeah. And... He, he, you know, he tips her hat off, like, he, he, he tips it basically, like, saying, like, oh, okay, I'll come and pick you up, or basically, once something I'm, like that. It's like, I'm done. It's like a silent interaction they have. Yeah. Um, so she leaves, now she goes to the school. Yeah. And she's watching all these kids playing. 
They're all like they're all getting out of school and they're yeah. all playing before they go to the cars to get to get up. to get picked up. And they're running past, and uh, the woman just starts yelling, "Janie, Janie!" Like trying to figure out which one is the daughter. And then Janie just kind of stops and looks at her. She keeps saying Janie, Janie, and then you see this like blonde woman in a car, kind of looking at her um, rear view over and over. Yes. And then eventually she gets out and. Janie goes to her, and she's like, "Oh, who's who was that? Who was that woman?" And the girl's like, "I don't know. I don't she, know." Uh, she, we find out that this blonde woman is her mom. Yes, but she doesn't know who the brunette is or anything like that. Um, all we know is the the daughter just tells the the mom that she was just calling her name, and that's why she went over. Um, but she didn't say anything else. Yeah. Um. So now. Um. The clown, the guy, so the guy in the beginning, I, I can't even remember his name. Jude. Jude. Yeah. Jude. So we'll call him Jude so you guys don't get confused. But <laughs> they, it's, it's the clown guy from the carnival. Yeah. Picks up the woman and they, um, the girl's like, it's really her. Like, it, it, it's actually her. Like, we, we found her. And uh, he, they come up we to... Fought, like, we spent all this time looking. We finally found her. Yeah. It's been five years in that pit. And I can't, like, and he's like, oh, it wasn't so bad. We found each other. And, uh, but they're being very, um, it's very vague. They're just saying that there's something, they were, they were somewhere yeah. five years ago. They don't say where they, where they were at yeah. all. That's, like, actually revealed, like, very close to the end of the yeah. movie. But they, not really. So, I mean, sort of. The ex-husband, remember? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, so halfway through the it's movie. like halfway, yeah. Yeah. But, so the, then, he's like, then she's like... Let's celebrate. And he's like, "Okay, I have a bottle of whiskey in the back of my truck. Let me go get it." She's like, "No, I prefer wine. I think the, I think the liquor store is still open." Yeah. So he, so he drops her off. She sends him to get some wine, and she goes in to freshen up. So what we then see is the mom is painting a picture, blonde woman. Yes. Now, Janie's mom is painting a picture of Janie, and it's kind of a. A weird looking picture, it's I guess. A very weird looking picture. Like the husband even mentions how oh, yeah, weird it is he later. He comes home. It's the science. It's the doctor scientist guy from earlier. Yeah, we reveal and that it's him. And, it's, she, yeah. and even she's like, "What do you think?" And he's like, "Oh, it's strange." I even, I even had to like comment. I was like, "Yeah, that's a that's exactly what my reaction would be." Yeah, because it's a very odd looking picture. It's like the girl, but she's like wide eyed. And, like, doesn't have, like, a... She has, like, a, just a blank expression on her face. Yeah. And it's not completed, so it kind of like... So it's, like, very, like, blue and... Lots of blues and purple yeah. in it. But she puts Janie to bed. She tucks Janie in, and then and then we go back to the man... So no, we, we go back to... Um, she a, goes talks to the dad. Oh, right, yeah. And about about like, the girl calling Janie's and she's name. she's like, I don't understand. There was this really strange woman at school, and she was, like... She knew our daughter's name. Well, and the dad seems kind of dismissive. At this he point, doesn't he's really kind of like, like, he doesn't you know, really like, care about well, it. It's like, well, what did she do? Like, is like, is there anything wrong? Like, what can we do about it, basically? Like, did she try doing anything to her? Like, nothing. And then the, the you know, the mom's just like, no, she just called her name, but it still freaked me out. Like, it's still yeah. really creepy that there's this woman lurking around the school trying to, attra like, get our daughter. Yeah, and she knows her name and everything. Yeah. So then the we get a just a scene of a, a random woman watching television. She's watching like a western movie she's on like TV. Eating and then you just hear like woo woo boom, boom, like gunshots. And she's like so interested in it that she can't take her eyes off the TV. She even goes in the fridge, grabs a beer, but all while watching the TV. Yeah. And then we get a knock at the door and it's Jude. So and Jude Then he goes like upstairs and the woman the old woman kinda looks at him like dismissive, like uh right. this fucking guy. And he goes upstairs, and the uh, it's to the what's her name, Andrea? Andrea's house. Yeah, Andrea's like apartment. Yeah, it's um, her apartment, and he has flowers and a bottle of wine. Pours it, and she, he waits for her to get out of the shower. He surprises her. She's very like kind of dismissive. She's she, she has very like one track. She's dismissive, and then she gets angry at him because he keeps trying to distract. She. She, well, he he tells her like, "Hey, uh, we can sell the trailer, and uh, you know, it's not much money, but we can get some money for it." This is when we get a feel for maybe they're on the run from yeah. something. Well, because they keep saying like, after he says this, she's like, "Well, this, no, it's it takes too much time." 
We have to be quick. She's and then like, he's like, I, I found a place we could stay. Yeah. It's safe. Like, nobody will find us. So he keeps, he keeps mentioning that nobody will find them. And she's, like, hyper-focused on the girl. Yeah. Like, she's not even worried about where they're going to stay or anything. Yeah. She just, just cares about getting to the girl. And it just establishes that there's... And so she gets angry. They're hiding from something. She gets mad at him for, like, just focusing on, like, where they're going to run to next. Because she yeah. doesn't care. Yeah. They found the daughter. She wants the daughter. That's, that's all she's focused that's all. on. And so they kind of fight, and then, like... There's a scene where she's she's playing piano, and I think it's the song that it, we hear. It was the song. At the end. She's playing it, and uh, Jude kind of, like... Comes over, and it's all, like, slowly... Weird. Like, he, like, tries to, like, touch her hair. Yeah. And she gets really mad, mm-hmm. um, and, like, gets all freaked out, and then... That scene ends... We get a scene of um, the mom kind of... It's the morning, and she's, like, cutting some bushes outside. And this woman comes over. It's, like, her friend, and she's, like, talking, kind of having casual conversation. She's like, uh, yeah, Janie had, like, some really... She had some really bad dreams last night. Like, nightmares. And <laughs> we get out of... I'm not joking, out of fucking nowhere, just like this... It's, it's like... It's filmed like, like a negative... Yeah, it goes from a negative to a positive. It's it's weird, like yeah, and it's the it's Andrea, and she's screaming. But it's like a it's like distorted. But she's screaming while we get this loud like heartbeat sound. Yeah, like, doo, doo, just doo, out doo, of doo, nowhere. Doo, 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 doo. And then and then she's screaming, and then we just see Jude like have this like no no first then we see like the mom like waiting for Janie outside the school, and she just looks really like disturbed. Like she's like rubbing her head, like she has a headache. And then. And, we see Jude doing the same thing with it's, it's like, like it's like uh, it's a negative, yeah. Like <laughs> it, it like came out of nowhere, and that's what made it pretty like scary. It's effective. It's the first like I guess you could say horror moment in the movie, and it, it's pretty fucking unsettling. Well, yeah, because it, it just comes out of fucking. It nowhere. comes out of nowhere, and you don't know what to expect. Like you have no idea what's next. But you get the impression that it's whatever this is. It's it's getting to the mom. Yeah. And so, like, we see the man... We see the husband. Um, I can't remember his name. But oh, we see that we see the husband at the... They're talking more about, like, metaphysical stuff. He's talking they're, with a doctor. They're talking about... female doctor. They're, like, philosophizing what could be wrong and with all these dreams. And He's a skeptic. She's not. But yeah, they're kind of talking and... He, we get a feel for that they are interested in each other. Yeah. Like, we get a feel that she's interested in him and he's interested in her. Because, you know, the way they look at each other, and their engagements, he, like, stuff uh, like that. He ends up inviting her out. Yep, so he calls to say, he calls the wife to say that he's going to be out late yeah. because he's having dinner with a colleague. We don't, like, hear him, but we, we see the wife, like, reacting. We piece it together because she says, like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll just see you later tonight. Yeah. Um... And so, and she even mentions later that she, he was, he said that he was having dinner with a colleague. Yeah. Um, so, the, uh... We get a, we get a scene of, um, Andrea and Jude. They're in the woods. So she wakes up in a bed and, like, gets up and goes and walks all all along a lake. Not yet. Not yet. No? No, 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 that's after this. Okay. Because remember, in that lake scene, she's wearing the red dress. Um, this is when they're in the woods, and she's putting it on. Oh, you're right, yeah. And Jude so is, like, is, is putting, putting mud. Putting mud on the license plate to hide, so no one can take, so no take one can it down. So no can detect them, so you can... It kind of just establishes more that they're on the run, and... You're right. Also, you're right. possibly... That was my bad. Yeah. I, I was jumping <laughs> too far ahead. And also that possibly they're going to do something that they don't want known. And Andrea puts on a very distinctive... Red dress with a little like a little brooch thing. Yeah, on it's her. like a, it's like a choker with like one of those uh, white. I can't remember what they call them. It's like a fucking. It's, a, it's like an amulet. Yeah, it has, um, like a, it has like a, a picture on it. Yeah, and she puts that on, and they're going somewhere. We right. don't see it. So the wife and her friend are talking about the premonitions. Like the wife is freaked out, and she's saying like. You know, she's seeing all these weird things. And, and she's getting this... And she keeps thinking about the woman that she saw at the school. Yes. And she's just... 
really unsettled that there is something going on with her daughter. Now we get a scene of the fucking unit husband <laughs> at the goddamn fair. At the carnival. With the professor. Having fun. Having fun with her at, yeah, sure, dinner with a colleague. Yeah. They're on a date. They're on a date, and it's, like, all and, fun, and there's a... And then they're on, like, a merry-go-round, and the professor notices that the guy's still wearing his ring. He's still wearing his wedding ring. So she looks down, and I think she's, like, having second thoughts kind and of at this point. she's kind of like, oh... She, like, she, was a, she has a look of disappointment. Yes. And we, we see all that. Then we see that the... So that's just establishing where, where he is. the husband is and where the professor are. Yeah. Because it'll come in... It's kind of important in the next few yeah. scenes because he's not there. He's not there for... He's not at the house. A lot of things. Because he's, a, that way. he's a fucking unit. <laughs> he's... A, uh, I don't really like the husband in this. He's very... Uh, I mean, you know, he, he learns. Let's put it that way. He does. But he learns eventually. But so <laughs> the uh, so Jude and Andrea arrive at the house of the the family. The family, and she gets out, and while well, Jude just kind of sits in the car, like looking around. Jude's basically the getaway driver. He yeah. just is gonna sit there until Andrea can go in, get the kid, and then bring well, her back out. We don't know that yet. We but, know she's gonna do something with the daughter. But she gets in the house. The mom's like asleep on the couch. And we get this weird, like, like metal grinding. Yeah, it's like, like this soundtrack noise. Like it's, it's kind of weird. It it, it almost like, sounds like if you were at a foundry and you were just like recording all the grinding and the yeah. and the metal work. Or like going a, on. like someone like scratching a, a violin or a guitar. Mm -hmm. Or just kind of scratching it. Yeah, but That's very it gently. Like. It's not like it's not irritating. Well, it's kind of irrit. It's not. It's, it's not overly annoying. Yeah, it's very, like... It's kind of creepy. It's quiet. Yeah. And she walks in. She sees the mom's asleep. She walks upstairs, gets in the daughter's room, and we don't know what's going to happen yet. Yeah. But then we hear, like, some sort of, like, creaking noise. Right. The mom like, wakes like up. Like, repeating creaking noise. Like and the mom wakes up and is just kind of like, what the hell? She walks upstairs, and she sees Andrea in a rocking chair. Rocking with... With her, with her daughter, with uh, Jeannie, yeah, yeah, Jeannie, <laughs> and like just like just like kind of like humming to her, yeah, and then the mom like at first doesn't know what to do. She's like, she's like, she's trying to scream, but is like speechless essentially. Well, I mean that's a fair reaction. Yeah. I think anyone would have that. Yeah, like I don't, I don't know, like a lot of people would have that, like kind of like. Well, what the fuck do I do? Like just pure, there, there's pure a, shock. There's a, a stranger in my house holding my child. Yeah. Like, how do you react to that situation? Yeah. And so she, like, kind of, like, she tries to scream, but it's just, like, like breathless. It's just out of shock. But and eventually, like, she kind of... She engages and, like, tries... And she runs at Andrea. And they, like, kind of struggle and... Because um, Andrea puts the daughter back in the, in the bed. She, like, gently... Puts the daughter back in the bed. And then they have their altercation, and then Andrea gets the upper hand and pushes the mom in the bed. And then she runs away. And then she runs away and, like, opens the door again and then grabs, like, a doll. Oh, yeah. And she uh, she grabs a doll from, like, the dresser and then runs out. And then before, as she's running, she's like, she just yells, like, she's not your daughter. She'll never be your daughter. Yep. She's my daughter. And then she runs in gets in the car, and the guy's like, what the hell is this? Like, where's the girl? And Andrea's, like, kind of distraught, and she's just holding the, the doll. She is holding the doll full-on, like, you like know, like, like humming to it, singing to it. Like it's, like it's a baby. Like it's it's a real baby. And he gets pissed, because he tries to take it away from her, and she, like, fight, fights him on it. Um, and he's just like, yeah. I think at this point he's just fucking confused on because they were going to go supposedly kidnap the or at least he th I guess he thought he they thought were going to yeah just kidnap the child but they ended up just having a doll so like we get a feel for like she's a little she's batshit insane she's crazy she and is insane the mom calls the cops cops show up the husband comes home after the cops are already there and he's talking to her and she's freaked the fuck out that like someone 
you know, try to kidnap our daughter. Yes. All this stuff. Um, all that. All that ends. So ends then we get the, the morning c- after the couple. Um, so Andrea wakes up in a bed. This is where I was. <laughs> I accidentally jumped again yeah. to this scene. Uh, she wakes up with the doll and like is still like very like loving. Yes, and so she sets it down gently on the bed and then goes out and like walks along the lake, and we see Jude wake up wake up on a, a fucking bot bale of hay yeah. in the middle of a house. <laughs> I like he can't. S- she gets to sleep on the bed. He has to sleep on the bale of hay. Maybe that's what he wanted. I don't know. They're both kind of insane, so... It's, I mean, yes. They are very insane. He goes and, like, for breakfast, he pours himself a nice bottle of beer. Can of beer. A too. nice can of beer. He, into he a pours it mug. into a coffee mug and then picks it up with his pinky out. And, like, kind of drinks it, like, just pissed off. Well, because he, like, he was trying to look for food and there was nothing... Like, he just dismissed all the, like, stuff he found. Yeah. And then she comes back in, Andrea comes back in, and... Um, lays on the bed. Lays on the bed and grabs the doll, like, lovingly rocks it. Like, starts singing to you, like, oh, you're such a beautiful baby, blah, blah, blah. And starts singing it like a lullaby. And he's, like, getting more and more angry. And eventually he grabs it, and she just freaks the fuck out, and he grabs it and, like... He, rips the doll head off mm-hmm. and throws it on the ground and she's just like my baby my baby and he's just like what the fuck is wrong with you like one she's like and then she freaks out and she's like she's like you're not the father no, first she like calms down and he's like it's not the fucking kid and she's just like so what yeah she does she doesn't care she just like snaps back to reality and she's like so what it's not yours anyway you're not the father you'll never be you'll, a father you're not even a man you're not even a man and she leaves. She like tries to run away, and she like well, she's she's, run away. Yeah, she, she just walks. She away. starts leaving, and he throws like a jar of, of like of like tomato soup or some shit, or like maybe ketchup? ketchup. I think it was ketchup, and like it hits the wall next to her, it, like just, shatters, and she gets red. all mad. And then I can't remember what she says to him at that she's point. Saying. And then he gets like he gets the knife from the table. Well, no, first he starts doing that crazy shit. Oh yeah. Uh, 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 like, and then he grabs the knife and runs at her and we just hear like we just see like the table and like the beer can is like tipped over and it's spilling everywhere but we just hear her him, screaming we hear her scream and then as the sc- as the scream kind of starts fading out we get the next scene and it's still the scream and then it slowly turns into a car, like a car's brakes. The car, like, as yeah. the detective shows up at the house. <laughs> That's a good transition. I'm sorry. I, I, I the don't know. Scene like, is ba- that scene is bad. Like, after that scene, we were both just like, like, what the flying fuck is this movie? I mean, I was already like that from the premonition scene. Yeah. I was just like, I don't know what's going on in this movie, but I kind of like it. And, oh boy. It just gets better. Yeah, it gets better. Then um, the detective shows up and talks to the fo- the father, yeah. and he tells them like, well, she's always been kind of weird. The mom has always been kind of weird about Jan- Janie because we've ha- tried to have two children and they both died in childbirth, right? Yeah. And so we're not the biological parents, right? So they adopted Janie. So yeah. So we. We confirmed that Janie is actually Andrea's. Not yet. Well, I mean, not... Well, but we know... But we get... But you can tell. We know that... Um, they haven't told us, but we know. We know the, the parents, the main parents in this film, are the adoptive parents of this, and the you daughter. And you can just guess by this point that, yeah, it's... It is Andrea's. Yeah. And we, as he's talking, the mom is in the bathroom. Right. And she just kind of is, like, freshening up. Everything's normal. And it starts doing that. It's that, like, grindy that metal grindy noise. noise again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Slowly. And she gets, she, like, starts, like. And she starts, like, she gets, like, weird. She does that, like, headache thing where she, like, starts rubbing her head. And, and gets, like, like, very, like, kind of, like, worried about and something. And then it, like, cuts back to the mirror. And first all, she, well, first, she's, like, poking around and being all weird. And then she looks at the mirror. And it's and all, like like blurry and then we cut back to it and it's blurry but we see it's it's starting to ice over like it's like frost 
is slowly coming over the mirror. Yeah. Really well done. Yeah. And it, it completely frosts over the entire mirror. Oh, yeah. And she, like, starts touching it and freaking out, and then she yells. Who yells for the, the husband, and he comes in a hurry. And there's nothing there. And there's nothing there, and she tries to say that the, the mirror was frozen over, and he's like, he's like, okay, well, like, I don't know what's going on, but, like, the mirror wasn't frozen over. Yeah. He's he's being more skeptical. The, he's like, there has to be an explanation, and she just says that, I think that woman, I think, and... I Andrea think, put a hex on well, us. She flat out says, I think Janie's mother put a hex on me. Yeah. That's what she says. And we get a scene of the detective going to this house in, kind of like in a, in a bayou, and... There's a guy in a wheelchair. And he rolls up, and it's uh, and first, his, and his name first, is Todd. Yeah, and at first we're not really sure, like, what's why is he talking to this guy? But then he tells him, like, he's like, he says something like, "Have you? When's the last time you saw Andrea?" Like, when? When's the last time you saw your ex-wife, Andrea? And he's like, "Oh, not since the divorce, five years ago." And then he explains, he basically goes into her backstory about how she got sent to a mental institution. Yes, for five years, because when they had Andrea, she was, like, doing when all this... When they had Janie. When they had Janie, sorry. <laughs> she was doing all this crazy stuff, like, she wasn't taking care of her. And um, the, the last thing that, like, she did before getting sent away was they found her in some sort of concert hall in New Orleans, like, stark naked, just losing her shit. Yes. And so, like, with the daughter left to only Todd, he said he couldn't take care of her. Yeah. Which is why he put her... He put her up for adoption. Up for adoption, yeah. So he can he couldn't physically take care of her because he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, or at least he said he was in, like, a work thing, but, he like... He got into an accident at work, and that's put him in a wheelchair, and he just... He couldn't take care of her. So, yeah. Uh, Andrea was in the crazy house. <laughs> <laughs> After this... We uh, get, just get a normal scene of the the mom going into the daughter's room, mm -hmm. just cleaning up some blood on the floor. This is like the scene that got me. No, this scene is creepy as shit. Um, oh, but uh, so we we do need to talk. So Todd also said that after Andrea, got, I sorry, there's a little bit extra on the the thing. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, <clears throat> we get the Todd is talking about how Andrea did. He remembers that Andrea did reach out for, to him after she got out of she the mental money because she wanted money and he didn't have anything to give her. And the and the cops like, well, that's fine, but did she uh, give you an address? And she did. Yeah, and we also get a little scene of the parapsychologist and the chode of a husband, like flirting, okay. flirting a little more and like trying to like not flirting. He well, just explains... The, he explains that his wife is having like kind of like. Weird visions. but And the parapsychologist is like, she's more open to it. Right. That, it, that she's not actually crazy. So she, so the parapsychologist starts understanding that there might be more to going on to those visions than the husband believes. You yeah. Because she's not skeptical. She actually knows about all this stuff. Yeah. And we get a scene of the mom in the daughter's room cleaning up some blood. She cleans up the blood because the when Andrea... When they got into the altercation, Andrea stepped on the turtle. Yeah, the daughter. Uh, we have, like... we, we There were multiple scenes before with the daughter playing with her little, like, pet turtle. Yeah. And, and the turtle got stepped on and there was yeah. blood on the floor. And so she's cleaning it up. And then, all of a sudden, the whole room goes dark. Except for the window. It's like a vignette thing where it's, like, it kind of... Everything fades to, like, dark except for the window. The window. So it's, like, still light outside, but the whole room darkens, and she just freaks out. She goes to the door. And tries to open it. Can't open it. The door's locked. And then she turns around, and Andrea... Is in the bed. Like, with cuts all over well, her. Well, first she's just laying down on the bed. Then she slowly gets up, and we see that she has, like, cuts on her... She's wearing the red dress. So she, she has... Cuts on her, like, collarbone. And her cheek. Yeah. But then she kind of starts, Andrea starts, like, laughing. And we see that she has a giant hole. We're in her stomach. Yeah. Because she, like, she, like, she, when she first gets up, her hands are over are her stomach. It. yeah. And then she, like, slowly opens it up as she's laughing. And she's just, like, looking at, at the wife maniacally laughing. Yeah. 
Um, and then, like, she's just, like, sitting on the bed, and Andrea, like, can't move. She's, like, petrified. Yeah. And then we get this weird... I, I think they, like, they did one of those things where they, they shoot the scene it. and they reverse it. Yeah. Um, so Andrea just really quickly, like, slides off the bed. Not slides up, it's like she... She, oh, like, God. jumps... It, it looks like a fucking, like, Japanese horror movie. Because she, like, leaps off the bed. And screams, like, right in the in the, in the, right the camera. In, right into the camera. But it's like... Like, I, I mean, I know, the, I, I know the movie magic. They filmed her, like, doing a backwards jump into the bed. Yes. But they reversed it, so it looks like she does this crazy, creepy-ass fucking, like, it, it, leap. It's basically showing that she doesn't move like a normal human yeah. should. Like, it's it, not, that's not normal. how, like, anyone gets up out of the bed. Yeah, it's not normal. Like, she doesn't just jump out of the bed. It's like a reverse, like, jumping out of the bed. It's yeah. It's really, it's getting, it's like, creepy. And, <laughs> oh boy. This fucking scene. But yeah, it's... And again, she talks to the husband. He comes home and she talks to him the same thing. She's like, I didn't want to tell you, but I I saw her again. Yeah. The whole room went dark and all this stuff. And he's like, okay, we'll, we'll go look. And there's nothing... Oh, this... It, like, I can't believe this scene because it just gets more... Like, it, it like starts... So he goes in there and it's, like, dark. Right? And he's like, well, turn on the light. And I, I get it now. So he turns it on... Or she turns it on, and it, like, bursts. It, like, bursts, and she faints. So it's basically showing, like, again, every time something happens, and he tries, she tries to show him, he can't see it. Yeah. So there's, like, an explanation for everything. In this case, it's like, oh, the light just, something, there's something happened with the wiring. Right. The light dimmed out, and then the next time you turn it on, it just, like, it explodes. It's circuited. It shatters. And blew it up. So that's, like, everything has an explanation. So she faints, and then we don't go, don't so get like, another like quick scene of no. So, but just really quickly before this next scene, it's like it's like showing it's establishing that it's almost making you think like is the wife just crazy? Yeah, because nobody else sees anything. And might I add, you have not actually seen Andrea since the dude freaked the fuck out. Hint, hint, hint. And then after this, we get us. The wife and the husband are having sex. It's like post-sex. And she gets a phone call. Yep. And she's kind of like, oh, God. Like, oh, my God. She just answers the phone, and it's just like, this is Andrea. Like, I want you to know that's that's my daughter. Like, I'm coming for my daughter. I'm going to get my daughter. Yeah. And she's just like, no. Like, no, that's, that's you can't my have daughter. Her. Yeah. That's mine. It's not your daughter. It's my daughter. And she keeps, like, taunting her. And then as soon as, like... The husband, she's like freaking out, and the husband grabs the phone. And as soon as he grabs the phone, it's just click, just dial tone. And he's like, "There's no, there's nothing." He's there. like, "I don't hear anything." We also get um, the next scene is we see the detective going to Andrea's apartment. Oh yeah, and he's like looking around, and he he finds a photo, the little the little photo from the cutout picture yeah. that mm -hmm. she taped to her, or she glued to her mirror. He finds that, and from then he's like. He gets that. Oh yeah, she's looking. She she it's it is her, and she's looking for the daughter. So now we get the husband. Um, they're talking again with oh, the so wife. Oh, so it's before it's before the scene. Yeah, so he's talking to her about it's how after the phone call. He's talking to her. How they should like, see the parapsychologist. He basically says like, "There's there's someone I want you to see," and she's just like, "No, like I don't need, I don't need a doctor." Blah blah blah. He's like, "No, it's not that." He's like she can she can help she and knows like, about she's like is it a psychiatrist she's like no she's a parapsychologist and I've been telling her about your situation and she thinks that like, well, she understands you well she she thinks be, there's something to it there's more to the visions than we know yeah basically and so the next scene after all that after the detective visits the apartment and everything we see the wife and the daughter burying the turtle yeah. Um, and they're burying the turtle, and, uh... We also get a scene of, um, eventually the... She's calling the husband. He's at the school or whatever with the parapsychologist. He's at the, like, the lab. Yeah. 
and he's telling her, like, yeah, like, let's, you can do it tonight. He's like, you gotta come now. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but we should get it done yeah. before anything else and happens. she's like, okay, I'll, I'll go. Yeah. So she gets uh, Janie, they get in a car, and they drive away, and it starts doing the grinding noise. Well, I love, I love this scene, too, because it starts doing the grinding noise as they're pulling out of the driveway. Yeah. And then when they leave, it, it has a shot of the back of the car, and you see just a little frost. So it's like, the, the way it's shot is like, it's from like outside their garage, and when they're pulling out, the car like backs up, and it like it's like right in front of the camera, and it's illuminated just enough to where you can see that there's a tiny, tiny bit of frost on it. Yeah, just to get you. And then they drive. They start driving, and everything's normal. But the girl is like, you know, like talking about how it's cold. Oh, no, yeah. not the girl. The wife is just like, she's just like, hey, did you bring like an extra jacket or something? I'm, I'm really cold. So she tries to put on the jacket, but then notices all the windows are fogged. Well, first she, like, like, looks in the rear view. And it's, like, icing over. And she just starts freaking out, and then the front mirror also completely... Ice, completely ices over. And now we see when they're talking, there's, like, you can see their breath. Yeah. And, like, it's, like, really cold in the car. Yeah, and she is, like, trying to stop the car. And it won't stop. And like nothing. the Like, the brake lines are cut or something. The brakes aren't working. So she's, like, swerving all over the road, can't see anything because there's frost all over the windshield, and she, like... She runs off the road. She runs off the road, and, like... The next shot is just her being carried out of the car. It's the police carrying her out of the car. On a stretcher. Yeah. Because <laughs> they don't even show the, the accident, like, they don't even show it crashing into anything. No. It's literally just, they veer off the road, and it cuts immediately to the police pulling her yeah. out of the car. And... Then um, they go, and so the, she's in the hospital, and the father shows up, and he's just, like, talking to her, and I don't remember who's, I don't remember if he asked her or if she told him, but eventually he finds out that it's just the wife in the hospital. So the nur so he asked the nurse, like, yeah. where's my daughter? And the nurse says, it was only her that got and recovered like, from what the do you car. Mean? Like, we only found your wife. Yeah. And, and he's, he's like, like what? I don't understand. And then he talks to the doctor, and he's like, "Like, where's my daughter? Like, we only pulled the like, wife. No, we only got the wife. Yeah. And then we find out that then we get a shot of the detective pulling out like a, the daughter's teddy bear and her little like jacket. So you know that the daughter's missing, and we get this shot of just the daughter crossing a train track, and then it slowly pans up, and she is going to the carnival yep. where uh, where Jude is. Yep. Um, now then, this this scene is insane too because it's it's so subtle, but I love oh, yeah. it. It's horrifying. <laughs> so uh, we see the wife um, laying on the bed in the hospital, and the phone starts to ring. Mm. So she picks it up, and she's like, "Hello." And then we just hear, "Who like, is this?" Oh, you're a good, you're a good girl. You're my, oh, like, you're, you're my, my sweet girl. You're my sweet girl. Blah blah blah. And the she's just like, "Who is this?" And it's like. It's like Andrea, but she's talking to the daughter. And doesn't she laugh at the end of it? Yeah. Or anything? Yeah, and then and then the wife just like gets upset and like hangs up the phone. And then the nurse comes in and is like, Oh, your phone's disconnected. Let me like fix that for you. Yeah. And like reconnects the phone. Yeah. It's subtle, but it's effective as oh, that's hell. Great. Like I was like, holy shit. I loved it. Like that was creepy to me. Mm -hmm. Like uh, like the whole fact like it did it in a way that wasn't like overly cliche and we get like more s scenes of like the wife like seeing the fucking vision of andrea laughing yeah. on the bed and she's freaking the fuck out and all this stuff and she like pushes a uh, like a vase off the off the nightstand and it crashes the yeah. ground and then we get a scene of jude and he like, finds the daughter he's like walking around outside of his trailer and then he hears like a it's like when the fair is closed down like it's at night yeah. but the fair is already over and he hears something there's like a little child's voice, and he walks around and he sees Janie like sleeping in one of the the tilt -a whirls or whatever, mm -hmm. and so he finds her, and then we get a shot of it's like the next day. Yeah, so and the wife is getting released from the hospital. Yeah, but we get a shot of Jude, um, with the girl, and, and there's like this like a caretaker, like basically like the the fair caretaker. Or no, it's like, like a. 
I can't remember who she is. Or she's like a fortune In the credits, teller. yeah. Because in the credits, she's listed as like a gypsy. Right. So she's just there, and she's just like, you have to get her to a hospital. Like, she's hurt. Well, because she doesn't look good. She yeah. looks like she has almost like pneumonia or and like is malnourished. Like, and he's just like pissed off. He's like, don't tell me what to do. I know I, I know how to take care of her. And like the, we see also see at this point, the woman, the gypsy woman is putting a, a photo into an envelope. Yeah. But we don't know what it is. We don't know yet. And she like wicks it and then like mails it off. Not yet. But we don't know, we don't know what's on the photo or what, where, who she's sending it to. Yeah. Like, I just thought she was just doing it because that's what she does. I don't know. But, like... I, yeah. When it first happened, I didn't think anything of it, but we find out. But so, as they're leaving the hospital... The wife, yeah. The, the wife, wife was just like, turn around. And I was just like, what, what do you mean? So turn around. We're going, we're going the wrong way. Yeah. And so we turn around, and we get, like, her telling him where to go, intercut with the detective going to the carnival and talking to Jude and being like, did you see this girl? You know, typical stuff, and he's just like, oh, well, I, I didn't see anything, but um, I think the the like the ride operator might know. Yeah. He's like, okay, thank you. So then the wife is just keeps telling him, like, turn off this road. And they go in, they go into a like a driveway. And they are at the um house. The abandoned where, house. Yeah. Where Jude and the woman were. Yep. And she's kind of walking around, and he's like, we can't be here. Like, this is someone's property. What, what's going on? And she, like, has a feeling about something. And so and she's looking at this lake. She's like, there's there's a feeling of death here. It's like, I don't know I don't know if it's our daughter, but there's something wrong here. Yeah, there's, like... There's, like, there's darkness here or whatever. There's death here. And... Yeah. And so he goes into the house and, like, looks around. We see the ketchup all over the, the wall. And, he, and looks, he, like, finds the doll's head. There's this creepy shot of the doll's head on the ground with, like, one of its eyes, like, halfway open. It's really creepy. And he's just like, oh, my God. Like, because he realizes it's the daughter's. It's the daughter's doll. And then we get this shot of, um, like, a... It's one of those, like, Like a, a pulley on a, on a jeep. On a jeep, and it's pulling something. And then we just see it pan over, and, and it's, it's Andrea. It's pulling Andrea's, like, lifeless body out, out of, of the lake. lake. And I was like, holy shit. The funny thing is, right before this, I'm like, wait a minute. We've never, we have not seen her since that scene. Yep. Yeah, and that's because, he freaked the fuck out. That's because he killed her. And I was thinking, like, did he murder her? Yeah. Yep. So now we, now we get a feel for, like, Jude is, like, really bad. There's something, yeah. There's something wrong with Jude. That there's something going on. Yeah. Now, they take the wife away. Because she was thinking the whole time that the daughter is in the lake, and they tell her, "No, it's not the daughter." Yeah, it's, but they take her away, and, and they want the husband to go, like, come to a coroner's, like, sign off on the coroner's report. So, also, the parapsychologist is there. Yes. And then, but she says something like, "There's not much time. We have to get you now. Like, we have to. We have to do this now." And, it, yeah. and then we're just like, "Oh, what the fuck?" Well, because the wife is even saying, "Like, there's not a lot of time. We yeah. have to save." Uh, Jeannie. But then you get the idea that the parapsychologist knows more than yeah. what she's letting on. And she sets up this whole, like... They're back at the lab, I should... Yeah. Like, the college, basically. So after um, they're talking and they set this whole, like, almost, hip, I guess, hypnosis up. Yeah. It's, like, the wife and there's this... There's just this thing covered up with, like, a veil... And the parapsychologist is like, pull back the veil. Not yet. <laughs> right before I'm about to start. Um, oh, yeah, the, the she husband. Gets a phone call. Yeah, and, and it's the for the husband, husband has to, like, she, he has a lecture that he forgot about. Yeah. And he's like, oh, crap. So he goes and starts his lecture, and it's about, like, black like holes. Like, black holes and, like, the like, universe yeah. and all this crazy shit. And then she starts her session. And she's like, okay, pull back the veil and tell me what you see. It's the painting. She's like, she's like, let me know what happens after you pull back the veil. And she's just like, let, like, just let the painting like touch you. Just mm -hmm. like whatever happens, let it happen. And so the wife looks at the painting, and it starts like one of the eyes starts bleeding. Then like one of the, the nose starts bleeding, and the cheek starts bleeding, and she freaks the fuck out. Yeah, the painting actually gets a, a cut on the cheek, yeah. and she like starts freaking out and, and screaming. Runs away. And she's like, I'm done. I can't do this. And then the next shot is just her, like, she's like passed out on a on a in a bed, mm -hmm. and she's humming this tune that we have heard before. 
Yes. But we see the the parapsychologist or somebody she's is... She's writing down the music notes. She's writing down she's the notes humming. that she's humming. Just because she thinks that there's something to this. Right. And, and we also get this fucking crazy-ass shot of Andrea in, like, a field with, with a like, horse. With a horse. And it's, like, it's it's filmed so oddly, too. Yeah, like, it's... Like, it's the only, it's the only like, shot we get where the guy actually, like, fucks with the camera. It's, like, a crazy wide-angle lens. It's a wide-angle lens, and he keeps, like, zooming in and out on, like, Andrea. Yeah. And it's just like this open field with her playing this piano and a horse there. Yeah. And then they think that there's something to the music. Right. We also get a... So after this, we get a scene of um, Janie and Jude in the um, in the trailer. This is actually the scene where the gypsy woman has the photo. Yeah, okay, yeah. So because this she's... is when she is there and she looks and she sees the Janie. And Janie is bleeding from, the, bleeding nose. from the nose. And she wipes it up and kind of like looks at Jude, like, suspiciously. And, and then, and then she puts the photo in. Grab the and photo like, yeah. and put it in an envelope. Mm -hmm. you didn't, I didn't think anything of it at this time, but I was just like, because right. I was too busy having my brain, like, exploded by the movie. So <laughs> then it goes back it. to the, the woman in bed, and the detective is looking, and he's like, I'll be right back. I Like, I, I think I know something about those music notes. Not yet, no, he doesn't tell him that, but he's talking to the husband, and he's like, I think whatever is... The key to this is in this music, right? And he's like, "I want to, I want to be here when we find out what yeah. this is." But then we get a scene where um, the parapsychologist is talking, and she says that, like, we that even though she's dead, Andrea's dead, her anger is still like it's living on, right? And so, like, the detective kind of let's like, give her what she wants, yeah. And we're just like, they don't tell you yet. No. But <laughs> the detective, like for some reason, gets a like a like a random inkling, and he goes. No, well, it's her idea. The detective like goes along with it because he doesn't believe any of it. But what he does, but what they do is they set up a concert, so to speak. Well, we got we got to mention oh, yeah. the fact that he went to Todd's house to get the music notes. Yeah, he gets the the notes that the parapsychologist drew up of the music, and he sees does Andrea have like notes, and. The ex-husband is like, yeah, this is the the last. This is not only the last piece that she wrote, and it's the last piece she performed before she died. Yeah, we also got to mention uh, right before the do the concert thing, um, Jude kills the. Heck, she's about to call somebody. She's gonna call. She has. She's on the phone with the operator. I think she's gonna try and like to call, the call the police yeah. because the do the daughter looks really bad. And she's worried, and she's worried. So Jude comes up behind her and just like chokes her out and kills her so you know shit's going down yes and um the woman goes to the so so they set up a concert it's like the it's like on the steps of like i swear to god it looks like the state capitol or something and yeah it must be like they're the like the capitol building in mississippi it's a pretty i mean i'm not gonna lie like for a low budget movie it's a pretty cool location to get yeah for a scene like this and they set a piano on like the steps and he has the Detective has, like, all the cops with him. Yeah, because they're guarding her. Well, not, they're not guarding her, but they're giving an audience. Right. Because the idea is, it's a concert, and they're going to give Andrea a concert with an audience. So he has his detectives there. And sh so the wife tries playing the music, and she's, like, she's not very good. Well, she plays it, but it's very, like... Choppy. And... It's, like, it's, like, how you would play if you weren't really into it like if you knew, and if you were just like looking at the notes and like kind of going if you knew the notes <laughs> and we're just trying to play it without like any it's basically like if you tried playing a piano for the first time yeah and you haven't played it for a long it's time it's like i don't know like i don't know if anybody plays guitar but when you're looking at like guitar tabs and you're just kind of like you play a couple notes and then you look back at the screen then you play those you look back at the screen you play them like it's like that it's not like you're not playing by heart, essentially. So the wife like gets too distraught and stops playing for a and minute. And then they're like, and then the the detective's like, okay, well, can I go now? I don't think this is working. And they're like, yeah, I guess. And the husband's like, well, are we done? Well, and the parapsychologist is like, like no. I need your policeman here. I need the policeman like, here. Like we're gonna try one more time. We're gonna try one more time. But the detective is like, okay, well, I'll leave him here, but I'm leaving. Yeah. And he goes back to their house, and he's like, I'll be at your house if you need me. Yeah. He goes back there. And the, and, uh, the wife's friend is opening letters. 
and she sees this letter. <laughs> and uh, as the detective is talking, she opens it up, and it's the the picture. That the gypsy woman she sent. Has, she sent it to them. It's her daughter, and he sees it's the full picture. Yeah. Not just the cutout. Yeah. And he figures it out that that's that's the carnival, and it's him. It's Jude because those those um, cutout figurines are outside of his trailer. So he goes back there, and he talks to like this. I guess it's like the the groundskeeper or something. Yeah. He's like, "Do you know where I can find uh, this?" He's like, "Oh yeah, that's the that's the whatever the fuck is that's name. the cutouts that Jude like yeah he, he had." Like, but he left like ten minutes ago. He's, you know where I can find him? He's like, well, not anymore. He like bailed out that way about ten minutes ago. And then we get like, we get a scene of like the wife sits back down at the piano, and there's all these people. Well, she well, it's she's been playing it for a while. Yeah. But she's been kind of playing it like before, where it's kind of like choppy. But we see like this crowd gathering, and she starts getting better. Let's put it that way. Better and better. And then finally, she's just playing it without even looking and he's at the like music. Escalating, and the husband's like, like he's getting like worried because like this is like something. This is weird. Yeah. And he kind of walks away, and we get like inter this intercut with the daughter in the Jude's like trailer, and we see that he has a big like horse cutout. Well, because then big. I think we should mention. Did we mention the fact that like. One of them said, like, wherever the daughter will be, we'll find her where there's horses. It's from a vision, wasn't it? Yeah. Because of the... Because that vision of Andrea playing the... The the piano. Playing the piano where horses were. Yeah. And she's like, there'll be a horse when we find uh, Yeah. Jamie. Wherever Jamie is, there's horses. Yeah. And so as they're driving away, we see this, like... Horse cardboard... Thing. Yeah, and it's like covered up a little by this tarp. And Janie is like on the bed in his trailer, passed out. Not passed out. She's just kind of like blank. Yeah. But we get that intercut with the um, detective driving, chasing the trailer, and uh, the wife playing the piano like really well. Yeah, without even looking at the notes. Anymore. And then eventually, uh, Jude drives yeah. up to this like traffic jam. It's sort because of. they're all, like, watching the, the, concert. Wa- the wife play the concert. Play the, yeah. yeah. So he, he gets, gets out, like, just to look around, like, what the hell's going on. And the husband looks over. And sees a horse. And sees the horse, and he remembers there will be horses. So he starts looking, like, trying to get a peek in the trailer. And Jude is just, like, he sees him, and they kind of have a tussle. And he walks in. Can't find the daughter anywhere, but the body... The body of the gypsy lady falls out of his, like, a closet. Yeah. The cop shows up, and... But you still don't see the daughter. You don't see her anywhere. But then you just get the shot of the daughter, like... Walking, walking through, through the crowd. And it, like, opens up. Like, the crowd opens up, and she's just standing at the bottom of the steps while and the, the mom plays. And the wife, like, finishes the song, and you see her see the daughter... And the daughter just, as soon as she finishes the song, the daughter passes out. Yeah. And then she goes and grabs her and is just like, it's like, over. Like holding her, and then the movie just ends. credits. It's just credits. That's the end of the movie. Yeah. They finally found the daughter. They found the daughter. That's all you need. Nothing. God I am. Now. This movie's great. I love this movie. <laughs> I, uh, this is like everything I love... It's satisfying. It has tons of twists and turns because it goes from like this weird like <laughs> you think it's going to be a kidnapping movie. It's not a kidnapping movie. Then it gets all like paranormal, and then it becomes like a fucking like like a kidnapping story with like this like ending of like them being reunited. Well, you have to like you get a feel of like Andrea as the villain, but then she turns out not to be, and she's like the victim. Because and then, like, and then Jude is the crazy, like the really. It's worth like, mentioning that it's not none of this is like it's not spelled out for you. No, the they movie, don't. The movie doesn't need to spell it out for you and have characters just fucking garf like barfing up exposition to you to explain it. What I love is but you. It tells you. That Andrea, after she died, is leading... She's helping the mom. Right. That she's some... 
again, none of this is explained, and it doesn't, it doesn't have to be. It but doesn't hold is, your hand. It doesn't need to. That she's using some sort of crazy psychic powers to guide the mom to reunite her. Yes. Because at the end of the day, she realizes that, yes, she is the mom. Right, and she's the one that can... Because Andrea, I think that's also why Andrea took the doll instead of taking the daughter. Because that was a... Like, I think that Andrea knew that she couldn't take care of the daughter. Mm -hmm. So she she was trying to hold on to the one thing that didn't really need, like, as much yeah. care. And that she also... And when she died, she realized that the other mom mm -hmm. was the only one that could take care of Andrea the yeah. way she took care... The way that she wanted. Mm. And that's why she guided her to... Like, it... This movie's... It's a B-movie... But it's like, it's, also it's really that a good. A lot of this is like, I'm sure if you wanted to, you could make the, you could make a theory that this is, that the mom is just batshit insane. You could, but I don't think, I think there's more to it than that. Because you could, if you wanted to look at it as just pure coincidence. Jude happened to be driving down that road, and yeah, there's going to be a crowd because there's a woman playing piano on the steps of the state capitol. At like, the mid in the middle of the night. Yeah, like there's going to be people watching. Right. And he just happened to be there. I mean... You could make that theory, but again, it doesn't need to tell you. I don't think that's what the movie was trying to convey, yeah. though. I think they were trying to get to the point where, like, you know, maybe there Andrea... It, there is some connection between Andrea and the other mom, yeah. and the daughter and both of them. The bond of motherhood. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Like, I, this is a B movie we're talking yeah. about. This is not, like, a, a big budget, like, you know, like, Hollywood title. Well... If this was a big budget Hollywood title, this would be garbage. There would be a, there would that be right that now. one character that was just like all exposition. There would be exposition. It would have jump scares. It'd be fucking dumb. Yeah. It'd be fucking stupid. Like it's surprising to see a movie from the 1976 that's a low rated film that's better oh, also, than most of the Hollywood shit that comes out now. Also, it'd have dumb CGI. Yes. It would have... More jump scares? It would have an ending that just over-explains everything. Way more jump scares, in my opinion. I oh, think God. it would have a lot more. Because, well, like, new horror movies, that's all they rely on. It's weird. It wouldn't even have a slow burn. It would, like... You'd have jump scares in, like, the first five minutes of nothing. It would have that scene where, like, someone's just, like... Like, nothing's happening. And then they have, like, creepy music, and then someone just gets, like... Every horror movie does that shit where, like... You're, it gives you, like, the creepy music, and then, like, a hand just touches someone on the shoulder, and it does, like, the brip, and then it just, oh, it's just... Or my favorite, the fake-out jump scare. Where, That's what I mean. Where the they'll, like, they'll, like, open a mirror, and, like, nothing will happen, and they'll close it, and nothing's there. Yeah. And then they'll, like, turn around, and then nothing's there, and then they'll turn back at the mirror, and then there's something there. But it's, but it's like, their friend. Yeah. And it's, like, their friend is just like, oh, hi there! And it's just, like, no one does that. It's okay. just... It's there's or no like the, you know like there something creepy's happening and then like a, a hand just like boom grabs their shoulder and it's like oh it's it's my husband see like in to me my I like some of my thoughts are to me this film it's kind of weird because it it doesn't feel cheap no and but I know it's I know it's not like a it's a B movie you but it doesn't yeah. feel cheap it feels like they knew exactly what they wanted to make. Oh, they they had it all planned out. The story is like really good. Yeah. Like I was surprised. Like they took a kidnapping story and make made it very unique. They added their own. They added like twist to it. paranormal shit to it. They added like this kind of like creepy vibe to it. Like they got down the atmosphere so well mm -hmm. in this movie that I've never seen that kind of atmosphere in a B movie. It's kind of yeah. weird. Like, it's kind of crazy to think that this this movie showed up on our podcast. Because I feel like it's an underrated film. It, I mean... Like, criminally underrated. For some fucking reason, it's low rated. Like, the acting wasn't bad. The camera work was really good. Oh, the camera work is great. The atmosphere is insane. Like, the whole, like, the cinematography is good. The atmosphere is thick. Yeah. As they say. It's thick. Like, this is my favorite kind of horror. This is my favorite yeah. kind of horror, and it where it just slowly builds. And it doesn't over-explain things. It explains it enough to where it makes sense. Right. But it, it leaves enough open that you, like, it makes, it gets your mind working. If you couldn't tell, we like this film. Yeah. And it gets your <laughs> mind working, and then as you think more about the movie, 
while watching it, it like it gets to you more. It's just you just keep thinking. About it's it. just weird that this is so low rated because I feel like more people should like this movie. I I, I don't I can't even <laughs> I can't nitpick it because I do I didn't really hate anything about it. I can't it. joke about it. It's just not like it's not that for the first time ever we're not making fun of a movie. It's not joke worthy. I don't think it is because it's actually de it's a really good film. And what the fuck I don't God get damn what it. the fuck people are rating this shit low for. Please, if you are one of the people that hate this movie, like explain why. I I want to know. I can guess. It's slow. It is a slow burn. But who cares? But I don't mind that. Would you rather it built more tension to be honest. You can't have like you need build up. It can't just be instant. Yeah. You can't. Uh, not for a fucking full length movie. I'm sorry. You can't. You need build up. And I'm sorry, but it, it's not even that slow. Not really. Like when I'm sorry, but you get like what 30 minutes in when you get the first premonition. Yeah, and it's creepy. I, like no, it's like what the th the thirty minute mark is the kidnap attempt. Yeah, and then like ten minutes after that, you get the fucking crazy ass scene with Andrea on the bed. Like that's is that slow? No, no. Well, and it's creepy. It builds tension. I yeah. think it was better. It's more effective in my opinion. Oh, builds tension right away. I mean, to, to build tension and actually like have a creepiness factor. Yeah, because that's what horror is all about. Shocking. Yeah. Building tension and having like an a creepy outcome to the tension. Absolutely, and it did shocking. Horror should be creepy. Whoa, I know. Whoa, I know. What a concept. That's fucking. That's a hot take. This is probably one of the better horror movies I've seen in a while. Like I loved Hereditary, I really did. But like in recent memory, this is one of the movie like, horror movies that I've actually really enjoyed. This is legitimately, if we're talking, like, horror movies I've watched that I've never watched before, this is one of the only horror movies I've enjoyed in the last year. Yeah. I'm not even being, like, sarcastic here. I, because most of the time, you know, you watch, like, the new stuff, whatever, you catch the shit on Netflix or whatever the fuck, and oh, it's God. just... Don't get me started on Netflix horror. It's straight garbage. <laughs> like, I, I watched Bird Box... I've watched it all. I don't give a fuck. It's dumb. <laughs> this, and, and again, it just deceives you because you watch it because I looked this up and I mean, why did it end up on the podcast? Because it's low rated. Yeah, that's the so only reason. You see it has like a 4.6 on IMDb and you're just like, okay, it goes on the podcast. Yeah. I didn't think about it. But now, now I feel bad because it doesn't deserve to be on this podcast. And then I finish it and I'm just like blown away that the fact that I fucking love this movie, I could recommend this to anybody. Any horror fan, I would. Anybody. Not even horror fans. I think it's... The story is good. The acting is good. Everything is good enough that, like... I mean, if you're not a horror fan, I, I still think you could enjoy it. Yeah. Satisfying. Well, because it's compelling. It's satisfying. It, it, it's good. And it, it doesn't... And it's effective. It's perfect. It does what it needs to do. It builds up to that last, like, ten minutes, and it just... It's satisfying. Just... Ends right when it has to. Even that concert scene where she like slowly starts like getting more and more familiar As with the song, liked. and then like she ha finally there's an audience and she's just playing it perfectly. And it's just like cutting back and forth between the 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 trailer and the horse picture and how like and then when he gets there and they have that confrontation and the daughter walks up the steps and it's all like intercut with that music. Exactly. And it's perfect. It's great. It's fucking great. Like. It's legitimately great filmmaking. So we're going to try something new on this podcast. Someone well, um, someone suggested a while ago. And I'm one of you. I'm sorry that we haven't done it yet, but we're going to we're gonna take your advice. One of you. So th probably the only one that comments on any of our stuff. One of you is a goddamn genius. So Recommended thank that, you. We, um, that we rate the movies. And yes. honestly, I don't know why the fuck we didn't before. I don't know why we... It's, it's literally a movie review, and we've never actually dumb. reviewed... We've, we critique the movies, we're but we don't, we don't give them a rating. No. So, in Team Cone fashion, and they mostly come out at night fashion, we are going to do a rating system. So, yeah, because we've given our final thoughts on the movie. Now, in every episode going forward, we're going to give a, a rating. We're going to do shitty to pretty. 
One out of ten. Shitty to pretty. So one being the now, shittiest, ten being the prettiest. Now this is our own one now, out of ten. Now, when, so when we say pretty... So when, when we give a ten, it's not like, you know, like you'd give the Godfather a ten out of ten. It's not... It's not like that. On this scale, if we were doing shitty to pretty, and I gave the go- uh, and I was rating the Godfather on this podcast, I give it like no. a, a thousand. No, 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 no. It, it wouldn't even come on this podcast. Yeah, this is just us. It's, it's shitty to pretty. One, uh, one being the shittiest, and then um, ten being the prettiest, which means that we really enjoyed the film. We'd recommend it. Um, we we'd watch it again. You know, stuff like that. Like, yeah. There's, like, stipulations to that pretty. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a good film. It, it just could. Mean, it just means... It could mean, it but could. it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a good film. It just means that we enjoyed it enough that we would recommend it and we'd watch it again. Because there was that film we watched not too long ago called Psychic Killer. And I would have given that a 10 out of 10. And guess what? I would also say I think that was a good film. Yes. Now, we're all... So first, I think we should... uh do you want to go through the past 76 76 and yeah. great so deadly kick <laughs> <laughs> oh deadly kick <sighs> i don't know I... what do you think <laughs> deadly kick let's see i would probably give deadly kick i didn't like deadly kick that much it's shit but i'd give it like a a 3 Okay. Because I didn't absolutely hate it, but I didn't really love it. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. You think a three is fair? A three? I'd say a three. I was kind of, I was maybe leaning towards a four, but the more I remember, like, it's how, a three movie. how wrong the hero is. It's a three level shit. I'm going to say three. Yeah. Next was uh, Velvet Smooth. I'd give it a five. I was thinking a five too. It's kind of mid range. Um, I enjoyed it, but um, not to the full extent no, that it's, I should have. Still, um, Michael Fink is a fucking amateur. Yes. So unfortunately, I can't give him higher than a five. No. But hey, nice try. Um, oh baby. Gang Wars, aka Devil's Express. Dude, I'm sorry. I have to give this one an eight. I give it a 9. Really? Straight up. Um, the only thing that brings it down is that the opening is awkward. Yes. It's a little, like... It's a dumb. little just stupid. They didn't need it. It's a little... Well, I mean, to be fair, they did need it. We do need... It just... I don't know, like... Well, I guess... An, I yeah. Mean, it has, well, it has right. to introduce our characters. You're right. Can I bump mine up to a 9, too? Because yeah. it is a 9. Let's just to but be honest. after that first 10 minutes... I only... It's straight swag. And the ending, the the final confrontation is one of the coolest things I've yes. seen on this podcast. No, every th- he fights a superhuman. Well, as soon as the monster gets to America, the movie is straight swag. Yeah, and some of the effects are really fucking good. Good effects, it's creepy. The scenes in the subway, I fucking love. I love the, the like... All the shots of 70s New York. I love that shit. The music. 9 out of 10. Bruce Lee fights back from the grave. <laughs> I, I have to think about this one. Just, It's not... This one's uh, special. This could go both ways. I did not like this movie that much. I think you're full of shit. I like... I like well, well, I, I remember just, you laughing quite a bit during this nonsense. It was enjoyable, but like I, I don't know. I wouldn't give it higher. Well, okay, you give your rating. I'll give mine a six. I was gonna say five. No, nah. S- sorry, it's two. It's just so fucking wrong. wrong. I have to give it a six. Well, I'm gonna. And get, I keep remembering. I'm gonna. It's our individual score, so I'm gonna give it a five because. It's it's enjoyable shit, but I would say that it's a five worthy enjoyable shit. But will there's a scene where a man says not says he does the what's up? I know. And then they punch him with a stick, and then the woman dunks his head in a pond. I know. And he goes back and kills that man. I know. There is that, but he wears he dresses up like a tourist. It's a weird fucking movie. Yeah, I have to give it a six. It's just. That's fair. 
I mean, you have every right to give it a six. I have to give it that I, extra. I'm giving it a five. That is my final score. Poor Bruce Lee wannabe. I know. I don't care. Five. Shameful. I don't care. He did, went to all that effort no. of doing nothing. I don't care. And you give him only a five. I don't care. He went it's through, a five. Well, he put in so little effort for you to give him a five. It's still a five for me. <laughs> Sorry, Bruce K. L. Leah. Oh God, here we go with the next one. I'm, I don't know if I'm ready for this one. Milpitas, monster on the run. <sighs> okay. Um. Milpitas. I enjoyed hating this movie, <laughs> so I'm not gonna give it the lowest score. <laughs> I I I'm gonna give this one a three. Really. Yeah. <sighs> because although I enjoyed making fun of this movie, mm -hmm. I don't think I'd ever recommend... Well, I'd recommend it if you were, like, inebriated and with a bunch of friends, but I would not recommend this, watching this alone, and I probably would never watch it again after seeing it. I'd give it a four. That's fair. It's charming enough. Why are you giving stuff high, higher ratings? I feel like I should be the more generous one. I'm just being, like... Mean. I'm just like, no, three. Charm. Fucking Bruce Lee gets a, a five. Bruce Lee, well, he, he's so swag, he didn't even sleep with her. I don't care. But he, she sat, he, well, she didn't even have a bedroom. Yeah, Melpita's monster gets it's a, charming. Three, a three for me. It's just, it's made by high schoolers. It's charming, and that's why I'm not giving it a low, it. and it's not... <laughs> That's not I'm not giving it a low rating, okay? There's only a couple I, of movies here I, that would... I feel bad giving Melpitas Monster <laughs> a, like, a one or a two no, there's because only like, of how hard they tried. There's <laughs> like, only like a handful of movies that I give a one. A straight up one. Same. There's been almost like... There's been a handful on this podcast that yeah. I'd probably give a one. But like, Melpitas Monster ain't it. Like, no. it. They tried. They didn't make a good movie. But it's, it's, it's endearing. So, Death Machines. Uh, three. Three? Yeah. Um, I, here's the thing. If this wasn't... If this was not as entertaining as it was, this would be a one. I'm not even fucking joking. That's fair. This would be a straight-up fucking one. But it, I was laughing quite a bit. And because of that, I just... I can't hate it as much as I should... So, I would, so it's kind of funny, I'd probably give it a 3, too. Just, I, I hate Frank. He almost made me give this a 2. That's why I have to give it a 3. I fucking no. hate the well, main, so... quote-unquote main hero. No. He's so incompetent. Well, the, the, the Frank factor adds to the 3. See, it almost lessened it no, for no, me. No, no. Because the fact else... that they did that, <laughs> that's your hero. You made a martial arts movie, and that is your hero? Where he doesn't do jack shit? You know what that is, Will? That's a choice. Yeah. That is a choice. That's a Maybe. choice that was made. And my god, they did it. And they went there. Um, so now, finally, we've caught up. Uh, well, what, I, think I, I think you know what my ratings are going to be. I already know what both of our ratings are going to be for this one. Um, so... It's a straight go. fucking ten. A ten. I got nothing... Fucking tin. I have nothing bad to say about nothing. this movie. I could probably dig deep and find something, but I don't but why want would to. I? I don't want to. I don't... You know what? I have my fucking fond memory of this goddamn movie, and you know what? You can't fucking take it away from me. I would probably watch this movie again. I, I would 100% watch this again. Yeah. I would... I would like to own this movie. Me too. That's, that's how much I liked it. It was it's... really good. It's like really good 70s horror, and I, I like that. And I, they actually, they got it. They got it. They they understand horror. Whoever made or wrote, wrote this movie understands horror. It's like they made a movie for me. Yeah. They knew. Exactly. It has a dark tone. That's it has some... years later, some goofballs on a podcast would watch this movie and be like, this is it. This is it. This is the holy fucking grail. So I want to thank everyone that was behind <laughs> this movie because... My god. Why didn't I know about this movie sooner? Well, thanks to our podcast where we review shit movies, we stumbled on 
this thing. I mean, I know we'd eventually run into good movies. We have. It's inevitable. We have. But, like, this is, like, one that I'm, like, I, I want to own it. I already own him for men, so that, that's a done deal. Like, I already own that shit. I bought it, like, as soon as we stopped watching it. Um... <laughs> Because I love it. It is awesome. Um, so, but this is another movie. I would I would purchase this. I wouldn't mind spending money on this movie. Hundred percent. It's worth. I it. I would support this movie. It needs it. It does. Um, we need more horror movies like this. Seriously, please, someone, like, get your ideas from this. Yes. Don't fucking copy Ouija or whatever garbage. So if, Copy you, this. if you made it this far, we hope that you watched the movie before listening to this review. Yeah. Um, if you didn't, that's fine. I mean, you, but I, I feel I feel like the suspense the movie builds is lessened if you know what happens in the movie. You have to watch. Like it. you have you have to go into it blind, mm -hmm. like we did. Oh yeah. And because <laughs> it's more effective if you do. We went into it as blind as possible. Yep. Um. Yeah. So I. I think I've said all I needed to say. Yeah, just watch it. That's all. Right, all. Just, I'll leave please, you with that. Please go watch it. Um, as always, <laughs> for they mostly come in at night, this has been Will. This has been Alex. And we will talk to you all later. <laughs>